Hello, everybody. It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of the Level Up Podcast. We turn agents into entrepreneurs, and we have a fantastic guest with us today. We're going to talk about how to use content to drive millions in revenue, and we're talking to a guy that's actually done that. And so this is not a theoretical episode. This is a practical, tactical, strategic episode on how to actually use content to build your authority and, uh, and drive millions of dollars in revenue to your business. And there's a lot of applications for real estate here, even though our guest is not from the field of real estate. There's a ton of stuff that we have to talk about with him. But before we bring in our special guest, we just want to first of all welcome the, uh, the man of the hour, Greg Harrelson. Greg, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, man. Excited as always to be here. And uh, just want to mm -hmm. say up front, thank you, Dave, for um, joining us. I'm excited to have a non-real estate agent as a guest, and especially somebody that has a, a specialty and a niche of content writing. So I think there's a lot of value that we're going to get out of this. So I'm, I'm, right. I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, officially, Dave Kirpin just wanted to welcome you to the show, and then uh, I'll give people kind of a, a little bit of background on you. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> and for those of you who are not watching the video or the live broadcast, I just have to fill everybody in. Dave is wearing his daughter's very colorful yellow and blue <laughs> headphones. So if, you, if you're listening to this on iTunes or Stitcher later, first of all, you just you have to go see the video. Let me just put it that way. But so, so Dave is the CEO of Likeable Media. He's a multiple best-selling author. Just to give you a quick idea, the recommendations for, Dave, for Dave's latest book, The Art of People, uh, is like a who's who of, of recent um, you know, media experts and book authors and, and some phenomenal people. So the people that have reviewed his latest book, Daniel Pink, Sean Acor, Chris Gillibo, Barbara Corcoran, Dr. Travis Bradbury, AJ Jacobs, Jim McCann, Gretchen Rubin. Good Lord, Dave. Um, so first of all, a lot of people like you. Uh, I think that's the moral of the story here uh, is they obviously you've put out great content and do a lot of great things with your with your social media company. But uh, I'm just curious, kind of give us the 60 second bio for people that may be familiar with the books or have just seen your name and stuff like that. Uh, who is Dave and, and kind of how did you get to uh, to where you're at right now? Sure. So thank you uh, uh, very, very much. Uh, flattery will get you everywhere with me. I appreciate your kind <laughs> words. And um, I, um, I, 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 I call myself a serial entrepreneur and, uh, and, and author and speaker. And so those are probably my three biggest areas of, of, of focus uh, in my professional life. Uh, I started my first company with my wife uh, 10 years ago now, and um, I'm on my third company and have written four books I uh, started off in the social media space and still am very passionate about social media, but I've expanded to writing about and speaking about business and leadership. And, and as you mentioned, my, my more, most recent book, The Art of People, is all about people skills and per being persuasive and influential, really, whether you are a CEO of a company, an entrepreneur, or a real estate agent, or a stay-at-home mom. I think we all have relationships at home and at work, and we all can benefit from um, improving those relationships and improving our communication skills. Yeah, 100%. So let's talk about the the role of content real quick, and we'll, we'll dive deeper on this, but I'm curious just on your, your overall strategy and what you recommend for someone that's going from, uh, and when we say agent to entrepreneur, so just to set the stage for you and for our audience to understand kind of the phase of that. So they're going from, let's say, a, a rock star business where they are the person, maybe they don't, they don't even have a staff, but they're starting to then take on either a person or people onto their team and transition into more of, let's say, a, an entrepreneur model type business. And maybe they, they start having more time to do content, right? They have they have time for, uh, for another strategy to bring in leads uh, into their business. So how do you look at content? Where do you see that fitting into uh, that? type of business and in that phase yeah so so matt i'm just getting to know you but of course uh, greg and i go go back some months here in working together uh with century 21 and so you know i know that greg's a, a awesome awesome sales guy and i i consider myself a total totally a sales guy at heart before i was an entrepreneur i was a i was a a a, a, a salesperson and but the thing is that that can only scale so much and, you know, at any given moment, you can only be talking to one person, typically on the phone, um, on, a, on a sales call at once. And the very broad role that I see for content, whether that's, and we can get into more definitions later, but whether that's writing a book or writing an article or writing a Facebook post or a tweet or a LinkedIn post, the, 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 the broad idea behind content is it's so much more scalable, right? And so when I, when I update my LinkedIn profile and I have... 700,000 followers that see that content, I am marketing to and prospecting to 
700,000 people at once. There's just, there's obviously no way to do that with a, with a, with a sales call. And so, so it, to me, content is this amazing way to demonstrate your, who you are, your reputation, your credibility, your knowledge, your expertise to so many more people at once. And it doesn't have to be salesy, it, but because, because the, 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 the stronger the content, the more you are still establishing yourself as the go-to person. And so for, for real estate, this has dramatic implications. Um, you know, if you're an agent, again, you can only talk to so many buyers or, or, or sellers at, at any given point. But if you are uh, speaking to content that appeals to buyers or sellers uh, or agents, if you're, you know, recruiting as a broker or, 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 t or team guy, entrepreneur, et cetera, then, then you can impact so many more people and dr drive so many more people into your business at once. Yeah. And, and Greg, this is something that you, you mentioned that you're working on. You're doing a lot of video content. This is, this is part of that strategy and, and you see this happening. I mean, you've been, you know, the more people find out about you and the more that you're out there and they find out about your business and your business model and your success, the more it attracts more people into your world. It, it has all kinds of great benefits for you. Yeah, no doubt about it. As a matter of fact, in my office last week, I was, uh, you know, standing in my station and, you know, I get a call and somebody's like, hey, Greg, um, you know, I've, uh, you know, I saw you um, on the Internet. I watched some video of you. I, you. We've never met, but I've watched a video and I'd like you to come over and uh, and talk about selling my home. And, you know, and, and even though I might be paraphrasing the conversation a little bit, it wasn't that far off from mm -hmm. being that exact dialogue. And I looked at my agents and I said, you know, um, where do you think I got this appointment from? And, and, and they know because I say this all the time. I said, I just got it off the Internet because I put some content out there and people actually reached out. So I think, you know, Dave, you've probably been playing in a lot of different industries besides real estate. And I'm sure the real estate industry is probably the industry that is catching on to content creation slower than maybe other industries. But I have to say, I think this is where it's going because I, I really believe and I'd like to hear Dave's comment on it or thoughts on it. I believe we have to be we have to have a digital footprint. It's kind of like I say this about the internet. I said, it's kind of like when you were younger and people said, well, you know, no credit is bad credit. No content is bad content. People are going to the internet to learn about us. And so when they go to the internet and they can't find anything about you, then they default to thinking the negative. Now, if they do see content about you and there's value in the content that you're giving, then they may think about you in the positive. But the point is, is that no content is bad content, like no credit is bad credit. Dave, what is your take on that? What do, how, how do you feel about that? Am I off base or what do you, what do you think? No, I think it, you, you bring up a very good point. I would say um, on an even broader note, and look, I, I, everyone, uh, most people listening to this or watching this are probably firmly entrenched in their role, um, in their career, et cetera. But I would say that no matter how entrenched in what you, what it is that you're doing, I can promise you this. You may or may not uh, die a real estate agent or real estate broker or real estate entrepreneur, but you're going to die the person that you are. And so the, the idea about creating this digital footprint or creating content is, you know, it, it represents who you are and you're building a brand, the brand of you. You're building that personal brand that does, in fact, live forever and can take you to other businesses, other careers, uh, other opportunities. So it, to me, it's super valuable for what you're doing right now in driving leads, in driving uh, reputation, et cetera. But it's even more valuable in sort of the whole game of life, right? Because, you know, uh, careers and specific jobs and roles and businesses within careers are by definition shorter than your entire life. And so, you know, when I think about creating content, I, I think about the content that that's now for sure. But I also think about the evergreen nature of so much of the content that I've created in, in establishing a, a digital identity for, for myself. That's, that's, that's ever after. Yeah. That's good. And, and I, I think, again, this is for, for the audience that's going to listen to us. You know, usually our podcasts are, hey, this is how you generate more listings like tomorrow. This is how you convert more buyer sales, you know, tomorrow. But what we're really talking about here is being a business person. 
right? And in a business person, you've got to make investments for the future. So for those of you that are calling expires, yeah, you're making an investment today and looking for a return tomorrow. This conversation is about the investments that you can make that while you're getting returns tomorrow on expires, you're also setting yourself up so you don't have to grind three, four, or five years down the road because now all of a sudden you're starting to get attention, you know, which I, we're all competing against their, you know, you know, for the audience's attention right now. So this is the way that you actually capitalize. And I'll say in most markets in real estate, um, there's very few content creators in the real estate industry. There's a lot of content being created in the coaching field of real estate, but very little content being created on a localized real estate market. Do you have any ideas? And I know you don't come exactly from the real estate industry of like, what are some areas in, in a localized market that maybe we should be creating content in that could get, uh, get the attention of the uh, property owners? Yeah, great, great question. And fortunately, I do have some ideas because as you know, I've been working with some, some, some folks uh, in, in, in real estate on, on building their influence and, and creating content in the last uh, several months here. You know, to me, you have an opportunity in, in your local market to become the true expert in that market. And so I think about the kind of content that I would want to see if I were thinking about selecting a realtor, the kind of content that I would like to see if I were thinking about moving to a neighborhood or moving to a town, um, and the content that I would want to see would be like the, I would want to see somebody that is the true expert in the town. So whether that's a guide to the best restaurants or a guide to the schools or a guide to the bars or a guide to family activities, to me, the content that you can create to sort of own the expertise about your town that you practice real estate in, that's really, really valuable. A better, a great way to think about this is the changing face of media. It used to be that media, okay, was magazines and newspapers and TV shows. Well, now you can be the media, right? You can be the guy that does the magazines and newspapers through your blog. You can be the guy that does the TV shows through video and live video. There's no reason you can't create the same awesome content or similar awesome content to what the top newspaper in your town or magazine in your town or local TV network in your town would be doing. And so to me, if you're an agent in say Cleveland, Ohio, um, you have an opportunity to create content on a regular basis like the 10 best restaurants in Cleveland and the you know, 10 things you didn't know about the Cleveland school system. And, you know, the, the nine best uh, um, hidden secrets about uh, raising a family in, in, in Cleveland, like that, that's really awesome content that has very little to do with real estate. But mm -hmm. if, if I'm a potential buyer or seller in Cleveland, I want to know that the person that I'm going to be partnering with, working with, understands my market really well. Wow, so you're really catching their attention really early on because I'm I'm just thinking that somebody that's going to be um, looking for content on the internet about schools. There, uh, you know, so in that particular case, maybe it's a buyer that's going to be relocating into my local market. So I imagine when they're starting to think about the move, then they're looking at, well, what are the schools like? What is this like? What is that like? You might be actually catching, grabbing their attention and catching their, uh, you know, catching them as a lead way before they actually start going on and start looking at individual homes. You probably exactly. are isn't, investigating isn't, the market before you're investigating the homes. Isn't it best to, to generate a lead uh, almost before they even have a need? Because then when they have a need, you're, you're already like their guy versus – having to compete with anyone any, anyone else. That to, that to me is the ideal scenario. And look, the, the less, the sort of more obvious answer, um, although more competitive, especially lately, is you know, create content like five ways to, to, to maximize the value on your home and three ways to set up an open house and you know, five things to think about when, when, when selling your home. Of course you can and should do content like that too, but you know, I don't know that that, that, that it, it, it's just harder to differentiate yourself from everyone else when you're doing sort of straight real estate content. And to me, the ultimate ideal is to be the definitive resource uh, when it comes to life in your town like that. 
I mean, that that takes some investment to be to be sure. But I mean, how cool would it be if you are the go to expert in your town for 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 all that all stuff like that? Like that that to me, you know, you, you just have you your inbox will be filled with 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 leads and, and, and questions and people that are, are coming right to you. Yeah, and I'm, I can I can imagine questions like, "Hey, where's the you know what are some of the communities that are close to that one school that you talked about that was um you know that was X you know what I mean that's probably the types of questions so you're really establishing a relationship with them at a whole different level than hey could you send me some listings you know that are between three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars you know by by that time you know i guess again you're 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 being a true guide almost like the you're being a real estate guide that's guiding them through the process prior to them getting to the to the listing uh to the looking at the listing so that's it's pretty pretty interesting matt what what are your thoughts on that i think that's i mean to me that's kind of where the world is going yeah right so like the the whole like if you look at the sales process if there's one big change that I think people have a hard time wrapping their brains around, and I think we all do, is just the fact that uh, the the cycle for everything is like having steps added to it, right? So it used to be pick up the phone, call, get a lead, go over to their house, list the home, and that's it. Now it's like, well, there's a step in between there where as soon as they get off the phone with you, they're going to look you up online. Right, where they used to, used to not really have that option. Now they're starting, and they they want to they want to find you online first. They want to be communicated with first, and then they want to maybe talk to you on the phone. Then they want to do some research. Then they want to read some material and watch some videos, and then maybe they'll have you over to the house. And it's just like you can see it in online marketing. You can see it in all kinds of industries where just the cycle for everything is being lengthened, and there's extra steps being added. And I think the the more you master those extra steps, you'll get way out in front of the competition. That of the, that still wants to live in the world of let's say 15, 20 years ago, where the sales cycle was very short, very direct, and there wasn't a lot of steps to it. So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I, I I like it a lot. So so Dave, where does a real estate agent like? You know, I can see the audience right now saying, "Oh gosh, mm -hmm. now I got to do this." Now I got to create right. content on top of like all the other things I got to do. And then you got some that are going to be hardcore prospectors going to be like, oh, I don't want to do that, you know, because I, I know the best thing to do is just prospect three hours a day. And I'm, I'm all in on that. The audience knows that I'm really, uh, you know, a, a believer of that. But where does this mm -hmm. fit in? You know, how much time should somebody be investing in a week or in a day or in a month to actually create content like this? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, look. Like anything, what you put in is going to be what you get out. But in terms of what I see is, a, a, I think that the, the two most important things are to make a commitment of some sort and stick to it. And, 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 and then look, if you commit to five minutes a day, you're going to get something, but you're going to only get so much out of it. I would say at a minimum, if you're going to make a really serious commitment to, 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 to building a sustainable um, valuable content marketing program in your business, you've got to commit at least, say, half an hour a day. And that half an hour can go towards content of all kinds. So we've got podcasts like this, live videos, videos, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn content, articles, books. There's so many different forms of content today. And you don't have to do all of them, but you have to figure out what works for you and what's easiest for you. Some people love doing videos. Some people love writing articles. Some people, you know, love tweeting. Some people love Snapchatting, right? But making sure that you're you're consistent, that you give it some real time to to actually drive leads, because this is long. It's long tail. Um, yeah. it, it is long tail. And the most common problem I see with with folks, especially small businesses, um, with content marketing is starting it and then giving up because it's not effective after like a week. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, if you're used to a traditional sales, you're used to picking up the phone and, you know, you might get a whole bunch of rejections, but you're going to get some yeses. You're going to get some calls. You're going to get some leads that way. Um, sometimes when you're creating content, it feels harder and it feels a little bit longer and it's easier to give up along the way. But as someone that's been doing this for, for years now and has really reaped the benefits of it, I, I, I can promise you that if you do it right and you don't give up early, it, it, it will become a, a, a lead machine for you. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I also imagine 
um, mm -hmm. that when you're creating content, I, I would just add, um, and this might be something that I think that I've kind of learned uh, from you, Dave, is we've, we've got to be thinking about the needs of the audience. Like if we're trying to tra target a buyer or a seller, um, let's just call it the consumer at this moment, focusing on real estate, we've got to really, it, it, this is not about creating content about their award that you won last year, this is, or, or last month. This is all about them. It's a contribution. It's like we know that we most of most real estate agents have been in a buyer or a seller's shoes before. We've probably done a transaction. Most people have, or we want to do a transactions. There's part. There's things that are frustrating about transactions. There's things that are exciting about transactions. So you just want to kind of you're thinking about what's the content, what kind of stuff. I would suggest that they go and look at the transaction as a whole, in addition to the um, the schools and the restaurants and whatnot and say, okay, what information can I provide that will make the transaction easier? It doesn't have to be top three things on, um, on how to get the highest price when we're negotiating. It could be, you know, three things that you need to know about the home inspection, you know, um, what to expect when you get a home inspection, if you're a seller, what to, you know, that, that type of thing. So. Yeah. yeah, totally. You know, at the risk of sounding a, a, a bit like an uh, egomaniac, I will quote myself and share with you that one of my favorite quotes from my first book, Likeable Social Media, it, that I find myself repeating and reminding folks to your point, Greg, is take take off your marketing cap and put on your consumer cap. Stop mm -hmm. thinking, and I would extend that to sales, stop thinking so much like a marketer or like a salesperson and think like a consumer. Think like your consumer and think. If you were a buyer or seller, prospective buyer or seller, what in the heck would make you click that like button, that comment button, that share button, that uh, that download button, et cetera, et cetera? What would make you take that action? And if the answer is this would make me take that action as a buyer or seller, then it's probably good, worthwhile content. And if the answer is, no, nah, I'd probably pass because I'm too busy to look at some other dude's awards or like bragging about themselves then it's probably not the right content to be sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that I find helpful is to, um, is to watch what stirs up um, an emotional response in me and then just keep, keep a, a, a closer eye on that and try to incorporate that into the things that I help, you know, like for my own social media, for client social media, because I think we lose sight uh, of that. Like when you said, when we kind of have our marketers cap on, we're thinking in terms of what's going to produce the result that we want. And we're usually not thinking in terms of the result that they want, which is they want to share, they want to experience an emotion out of something that they're so, some piece of content they want to share it with people. And a lot of times, um, I mean, there, there's a bunch of reasons that people share, but one of the main reasons I think is people, they share content, especially like useful content or motivational content to, to affect and raise their status with, with their social media following. So giving them something practical that like solves that problem is one way that we can uh, make our, our content more effective. And so that, like just kind of noticing like what, what gets us going, like what causes an emotional response in us and looking for ways to kind of create that same, you know, content that delivers that same emotional response, if that makes sense. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, when I when I talk about the kinds of content that are worth creating and sharing, I, I talk about EEI, uh, which was an old radio station in Boston that I used to listen to and uh, as the, the easy acronym. And um, it stands for educate, entertain and inspire. And your content should do one or more of those three things. Always. It should entertain and or educate and or inspire. And if it's doing none of those things, mm, Probably not that valuable. The other thing that I would be remiss if I didn't mention, I know I've talked to Greg a whole lot about this over the last few months, is, is the importance and value of the headline or subject line or you know whatever that title is to your content. Because the reality is what most people do is they spend 90% of their time creating that content. So for let's take an article, for example. They, they spend 90% of their time creating this, writing this, awesome article and then they like as an afterthought create the title to the article and the problem there is that nobody the title isn't very thoughtful and emotion evoking and you know action driving and then nobody clicks on it and then nobody reads their article so no matter how good it is it's not going to be seen if you don't have an incredible headline so i as shocking as this might sound i flip the script on that and i i, I tend to spend up to 90% of my time and mental energy creating, crafting the perfect 
headline or title to my content. And then the remaining 10% actually making sure that I deliver that content and it's, and it's worthy of that headline, which is a, which is a promise and it, and, and, it, and, it, and it delivers. But I find that uh, so often the, the great content is lost in really bad headlines. And so that, that makes yeah. me very sad. Yeah, yeah here, here's something I just thought. So every real estate agent that takes a listing today or tomorrow or, or the next day is going to have to write content. It's called the description of the property. So here's what I just learned from you, Dave, or I'm going to take away and I wrote down on my notes is in our description of our listings before we actually submit them to the MLS, we need to think of what's the headline, meaning what's the first sentence, because that could be our headline. Right. And then we got to be thinking of educate. Um, entertain or inspire. Now, we may not do the entertaining as much in a real estate description, but if we focus on just that one bit of content and we focus on the headline and educating, entertaining, or inspiring, we actually may gain more traffic from our listings. And that's getting syndicated all over the world. So just every real estate agent that gets a listing is a content writer because they have to create that bit of content. So let's just take that little lesson that Dave shared with us and at least start there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's br that's brilliant, Greg. And I'll, I'll give you a, an actual real life example. You know, I just moved into the home uh, from which I am broadcasting today, and um, it, it it is a it was advertised in its headline as a modern day Great Gatsby, and that freaking got my attention and and inspired me at, to the point where I took a second look and I ended up buying the home. So I mean, look, if it had just said large home, suburban, beautiful area, like I, I might not have, I might not have be sitting in this home right now, but it said modern day great Gatsby and that freaking got my attention really quickly and really powerfully. That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> well, I know Dave would have training in my that. office. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, Greg's going to come out with a training on that. Uh, so I know, Dave, we don't have you for too much longer because we're running up against uh, a time commitment for you. But I just want to let, uh, like, kind of let people know how do, how do they get connected into your world? Because you've got multiple books and, and there's there's a lot of valuable stuff that you put out. I mean, I, I don't know if the numbers are still accurate on this, but you're the, the number one LinkedIn influencer in terms of page views, which is insane. So if anybody's interested in uh, in building up their LinkedIn strategy, you are one to definitely follow and emulate. So what's the best way for people to get into your world? Yeah, well, I'm glad you mentioned uh, uh, um, LinkedIn only because to, to our point earlier, I want to make sure we deliver against the headline that we created for, for this uh, uh, podcast and video, which was, you know, drive millions in revenue. And I, I have absolutely driven millions in revenue through my content and specifically through LinkedIn, which has been so, so valuable in driving leads and ultimately revenue for, for our, my businesses and our businesses. Um, look, one of my core values is responsiveness. So I, I make it a point, even though I get literally uh, hundreds of inquiries every week uh, across social media and email to respond to each and every question, uh, uh, comment that I get. So, you know, you can hit me up, you know, my name, Dave Kirpin, with an E uh, at uh, really every social network that you could possibly imagine. And um, I promise to uh, to get back to you if you have a question or connect with you if you'd like. And then um, our book, my, my books are all on Amazon and bookstores everywhere uh, under, under my name, Dave Kirpin. And then our businesses are all under likable. So if you Google uh, the word likable, fortunately for me, you'll, you'll, you'll find uh, uh, our, our businesses. And I'm, I'm happy to connect with people and, and help however I can. You awesome. know, when I was at your office, David, I, I, I'm so mad at myself that I didn't bring that little finger, the likable finger thing that, that I had. I wanted to bring that and show everybody. Just my kids love that thing. It's actually hanging up in their room right now. So, uh, <laughs> well, perhaps you don't have one on your desk right uh, but, now. You can show everybody. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say a huge, a huge part, part, part of my overall sort of mission and, um, and work is to help people understand the power of personal branding as well. And that's why I've got the, the, the big orange likable thumbs and why I wear orange shoes every single day. And I, I just think that we have such an opportunity to stand out. And so few people take that, take that opportunity. I'll, I'll leave you with one of my favorite quotes. That's not from me. <laughs> um, Seth Godin, one of my uh, favorite authors and, 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 and uh, I can call him a mentor. And he was kind enough to blurb uh, my first book. He, he, he writes, how dare you settle for less when the world has made it so easy to be remarkable? And what I would say is content marketing makes it so easy for you to be remarkable, for you to stand out from all the other real estate uh, execs in your market. Why the heck wouldn't you? How dare you not 
embrace this concept and 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 be remarkable and and stand out from everyone else. That's awesome. Love it. All right, guys. Well, for uh, for us, for the podcast, just a quick reminder for everyone to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube, depending on whether you want the audio or video versions. Uh, as always, you can uh, reach out to Greg, just Greg Harrelson at gmail.com. And just want to be honorable to uh, to Dave's time. So just want to thank everybody for watching. We really appreciate it. Make sure to reach out to Dave. Thank him so much for doing the, the podcast, especially with us live. Uh, we know he's got to run. So we will uh, put a nice little bow on this one. Dave, thanks again so much. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Great to see you, Greg, and great to meet you, Matt. And uh, I will see you guys and the rest of you guys uh, on the Internet.